welcome to our channel in this lecture i will explain what is an ideal transformer what are the features of ideal transformer suppose if you take one class in that class 60 students are present out of 60 if 40 students are passed in all the subjects then the class pass percentage will be decreases the remaining 20 students are failed out of 60 students all the 60 students are passed that means this is an ideal case maybe it is possible but in overall college all the students are not passed similarly same way there is a difference between the ideal and practical and uh, the first feature of ideal transformer is permeability of transformer core is infinity permeability of transformer core is infinity permeability means that is defined in a magnetic field permission to allow the flux you can remember like this for an easy access of following the flux for an easy access of following the flux is called the permeability for an easy access of allowing the flux is called permeability so the transformer core consists of low reluctance and high permeability high permeability this is a feature so what is the relationship between reluctance in a magnetic field means just like a resistance in electric field flux is equal to mmf divided by reluctance the reluctance can be represented with s letter mmf is a number of turns into current divided by reluctance if the reluctance is minimum the flux distribution is maximum the first point is permeability of transformer core is infinity and the second one is the effect of iron losses in a transformer effect of iron losses in a transformer is zero transformer core is zero and third one is resistance of winding is zero if you take a winding the winding generally is made up of copper and the copper has a resistance but we can assume that resistance of the winding is zero and the leakage reactance the rxl is called leakage reactance is also zero and fifth point is the bh curve is linear we are considering the five major features of transformer so so many features are there but these are five features are very important and the first one is permeability of transformer core is infinity the permeability of transformer core is infinity means there is no excitation current it will produce a infinite flux so this is a transformer core i am taking a core type of transformer it has a two limbs and uh, the windings are mounted on the limbs this is a high voltage winding hv winding and this one is lv winding without giving any supply without giving any supply the flux will be 
produced infinity is it possible not possible that's why we are taking the first point is permeability permeability of transformer core has finite value so we are why we are taking the ideal transformer means we can prove it it is a wrong permeability of transformer core is infinity in an ideal case but coming to the practical case transformer core has finite permeability so that is a finite value that is a defined value so minimum excitation current is required to produce the flux or uh, ideal transformer operating under ideal transformer operating under no load condition in an examination is asking explain the operation of single phase transformer that is ideal transformer operating under no load condition so that is a question so this is a core type of transformer again i am drawing this coil is wanted like this the primary winding secondary winding i am giving a sign side voltage since it is a closed circuit alternating current is flowing which will produces an alternating flux in the transformer core alternating flux in the transformer core this current is called the magnetizing component of current this current is called the magnetizing component of current that is i mu okay is called the magnetizing component of magnetizing component of current to magnetize the core or to produce the flux some current is required so that current is called the magnetizing component of current whenever we are giving sinusoidal voltage an alternating current flows through transformer primary winding which will produce as an alternating flux this flux links with the primary winding and secondary winding according to faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and emf is induced in a primary as well as the secondary so this is hv winding and this one is lv winding the primary winding has n1 number of turns and secondary winding has n2 number of this is under no load condition means the secondary is not loaded it is under open circuit condition so this is at open circuit condition so with this alternating current is flowing through coil or magnetizing coil which will produce as an alternating flux that is n1 into i divided by s i mu or n1 into im sin omega t divided by reluctance so phi m into sin omega t so if i is i mu is i m sin omega t and phi is phi m sin omega t the phase angle difference between flux and magnetizing component of current is zero if i am drawing the phasor diagram for an ideal transformer the resistance of the winding is assumed as zero for an ideal transformer the resistance of the winding is assumed is zero the coil offers pure inductive nature the coil offers pure inductive nature because of that we know that the angle between voltage and magnetizing component of current is exactly 90 degrees with this magnetizing current is flowing through the winding which will produces a flux 
that is in phase with the magnetizing component of current because the angle between the flux and IMU is zero. This alternative current, uh, alternative flux is linking with the primary and secondary. An EMF is induced according to Faraday's law. This minus sign is according to Lenz law. What Lenz law says that? Lenz law says that the effect will always opposes the the effect will always opposes the cause. So the, what is the cause for production of EMF? Cause for production of EMF is the voltage. It will be opposes. And the flux is the cause. It will opposes. Because of that, 90 degrees time delay is provided. This is called the E1. The angle between the flux and induced EMF is 90 degrees. We can prove it mathematically. E is equal to minus n into d phi d by dt of flux is phi m sin omega t. So minus n into so phi m into d by dt of sin a t eta or sin a t is equal to cos a t into a similarly cos omega t into omega n into phi m into omega we can write it as sine of 90 minus omega t so sine 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta and n into phi m into omega sine of so minus is inside minus is brought inside omega t minus 90 degrees so this is E max sine of omega t minus 90 degrees. This is the induced EMF of a transformer is lags behind the flux quantity by exactly 90 degrees. The induced EMF E2 is also lagging because E1 and E2 both are induced at a time. This is E1. And E2 is also same thing E max sine of omega t minus 90 degrees. So once again listen. Because of inductive nature of the winding. The angle between the supply voltage and magnetizing component of current is 90 degrees. With this alternating flux S. Yes, the angle between the flux and the magnetizing component of current is 0 degrees. Once current flows through coil, flux will be developed simultaneously. After that, alternative flux links with the primary winding and secondary winding and EMF is induced according to Faraday's law. This minus sign is represents the lens law. Effect will always opposes the cause. The production of EMF is due to the flux. That's why it will opposes. During that, the time delay is uh, produced 90 degrees. We can prove it mathematically also. E is equal to E max sine of omega t minus 90 degrees. The angle between voltage and supply voltage and induced EMF exactly opposite. That is 180 degrees. Then the transformer is also called as a phase shifting device. Then the transformer is also called as a phase shifting device. This is the phasor diagram under no load conditions. So the next concept is practical transformer on no load condition. What is our second assumption? The se second assumption is effect of fire and losses. In a transformer core is zero. We are considering iron losses in a transformer is not zero. 
what are the iron losses there are two types of losses one is hysteresis loss and another one is uh, eddy current losses so we already discussed these two what is the hysteresis loss and eddy current losses if we take a machine losses will be present how the question will be asked asked in an university examinations explain the practical transformer is operating under no load conditions that is our question so i am taking a core type of transformer so again the same story the core type of transformer has two limbs and the primary is winding is wounded on one limb and the secondary winding is mounted on another limb primary means we are giving the supply then i mu or im this is called the magnetizing component of current as yes, i mu is called magnetizing component magnetizing component of current so this magnetizing component of current is required to produce flux the magnetizing component of current is required to produce the flux and one more current is required to meet the losses that is called the watt full component of current so watt full component of current so generally the phases are represented with capital letter this is i mu bar and i w bar so in some some of the textbooks it is given as i c bar and the i mu bar can be written as i m bar so one current is required to produce a flux and another current is required to meet the losses that is called the core losses so now it is the phase of sum of watt full component of current or active component of current active component of current this is magnetizing component of current or reactive component of current component of current so if you draw the phasor diagram so our supply voltage v is a magnetizing component of current and flux both are is in same phase and the induced emfs are lags behind the flux by 90 degrees so this is a previous phasor diagram now one component is added so that is called the watt full component of current so this is capital i mu so phases are represented with capital letters and the i w is in phase component i w is in phase component as the name itself it is a active component of the current this active means the angle between the voltage and the watt full component of the current is 0 degrees the angle between the voltage and watt full component of current is 0 degrees how can i add these two phases by using a parallelogram concept draw a line which is parallel to i mu parallel to i mu from this i mu draw a line which is parallel to i w the length of this one is i w the length of horizontal line is i mu by adding these two phases i am getting a resultant current that is our no load current the angle between the v and phi not is called the no load power factor angle so the angle between v and i not is called the phi not where phi not is called the no load 
पवर् फैक्टर नो लोड पवर् फैक्टर ऐंगि सी हियर वन ट्रयांगल फॉर्म द हारीजेंटल कांपोनेंट इज ईडब्ल्यू द वर्टिकल कांपोनेंट इज ईम्यू एंड द हईपोटेंट कांपोनेंट इज नाट सो ऐम ड्राइंग लाइक दिस This is I W. The vertical component is I M U, and the hypotenuse component is I naught. The angle between these two is phi naught. So cos phi naught is equal to I W divided by I naught. So from this, I am getting I W is equal to I naught cos phi naught. Sine phi naught is equal to I M U divided by I naught. The I mu is equal to I naught sine phi naught. This component is this component is core loss component. The so core loss component which is in phase with. So which is in phase with V one. This is called the reactive component of the current. Reactive component of current. So that is in that is lagging behind. Lagging behind. V one divided by ninety degrees. If you observe. I W is the in phase component. I and I mu is lagging the supply voltage. With ninety degrees, so we have a core loss component that should be equal to. This is called the core loss. V into I naught into cos phi naught. Generally, the no load power factor is approximately equal to seventy five degrees to eighty degrees, and the no load power factor as this cos phi naught is called the. No load power factor is approximately equal to point to lagging. So point to lagging. So if you ap apply it, or if you are represented in a complex form, I naught is equal to I W plus J times of I mu. So from this, the magnitude of I naught is equal to. I W square plus I mu square. <coughs> the angle is uh, tan inverse of I mu divided by I W. Okay, is a core loss component, so we can write it as a W naught also. So W naught is equal to V into the what is I naught cos phi naught is. I W. Okay, this represents the iron loss component. So coming to one problem, simple problem. A three thousand three hundred by two twenty volts, thirty kVA. Single phase transformer takes a no load current of no load current of one point five amperes when the low voltage winding is open. Low voltage winding. Low voltage winding is open. The iron loss component. So the iron loss component is point four amperes. The iron loss component is point four amperes. Find. The no load input power 
and the second one is uh, magnetizing component magnetizing component and the third one is power factor of no load current so this is the problem a 3300 divided by or by 220 that means e1 is 3300 volts and e2 is 220 volts 30 kva so generally the apparent power is dependent with kilo volt ampere 30 kva no load current is i naught is equal to 1.5 amperes and the low voltage winding is open so if i am drawing the transformer diagram so this is code type of transformer and here you can on the winding and another winding is also wounded on the another limb second limb this is 3300 volts induced emf e2 is 220 volts the iron loss component is 0.4 amperes the core loss component or iw is equal to 0.4 amperes okay so what is iw is equal to i naught cos phi naught iw is given as 0.4 the no load current is given as 1.5 amperes into cos phi naught from this i will get cos phi naught is equal to 0.2667 lagging okay then you can find the sine phi naught by using your calci you will get 0.96378 so the magnetizing component of current i mu is equal to i naught sine phi naught the no load current is 1.5 into 0.96378 so I got it as 1.4456 amperes. The where V naught is equal to no load primary voltage. No load primary voltage. That is 3300 volts. It is E1. Then the power P naught core loss component. V I naught cos phi naught. So 3300 into the no load current is 1.5 the power factor is 0.2667 and finally I get it as 1320.165 watts. The core loss component is equal to 1320.165 watts for this problem. This is a simple and easiest problem just if you know the formulas and concept.